On today's episode, low carbon graphene reinforced concrete, Auto and Aero Tier 1s team up for electric air taxis, and Peloton opens a US factory. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Are composites the future of concrete? A joint venture between the UK-based University of Manchester and alumni-led construction firm Nationwide Engineering is exploring that question with the world's first test of a graphene-enhanced concrete called Concretine. The test slab, the floor of a new gym, has been poured and the team reports high strength with no steel reinforcement. Depending on project size, Nationwide Engineering predicts a 10 to 20% cost savings for customers. Using small amounts of graphene functional filler, Concretine is 30% stronger pound for pound than the typical high performance reinforced C30 grade concrete used for flooring applications for foot traffic. According to the university, there are climate impacts as well. Concrete production accounts for 8% of global CO2 emissions, and if concrete was a country, it would be the third largest CO2 emitter in the world, behind only China and the US. The graphene reinforcement acts not only mechanically, but also as a catalytic surface for the hydration reaction that's key to the setting of concrete mixes, and also enhancing the bond with the matrix that's essential for any good filled matrix composite. The University of Manchester's Graphene Engineering Innovation Center is working with structural engineers HBPW Consulting to commercialize the technology, and Nationwide Engineering has multiple UK rail and government contracts where the CO2 reduction alone is a significant advantage. If applied to global concrete production, graphene reinforced concrete could reduce global CO2 emissions from all sources by 2%. Carbon based composite reinforcement isn't just for aerospace anymore. Multiple startups are working on electrically powered air taxis, so much so that the nascent industry has its own acronym UAM for Urban Air Mobility. In its final development, the urban air mobility industry hopes to deploy point-to-point short-range air transport in urban areas using carbon-free, battery-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, flown autonomously. Most work to date has been done by startups and small prototype operations, but in a major development, two leading manufacturing companies are entering the market. Automotive Tier 1 heavyweight Denso and aerospace system supplier Honeywell. The two companies have established an alliance to develop electric propulsion systems for both air taxis and airborne drone delivery vehicles. The alliance follows a 2019 collaboration to develop all-electric and hybrid prototypes. Honeywell had independently developed a hybrid motor generator prototype using a standard HDS 900 APU-type turbine connected to two 200 kilowatt generators. The system was designed to feed motors directly or charge batteries. The alliance is significant because it combines the high-volume mass production capability of Denso's automotive business units, including hybrid, electric, and fuel cell experience, with Honeywell's expertise in aircraft systems, and as importantly, the development of systems subject to FAA certification. Now, the move suggests that the projected market for flying taxis is well beyond conventional aircraft production volumes, which means thousands or tens of thousands rather than hundreds. Will we see flying taxis in urban areas before the end of the decade? When industry heavyweights like Honeywell and Denso invest, the likelihood improves significantly, and we'll be watching. With the COVID-19 pandemic causing widespread lockdowns, one industry that has seen meteoric growth has been the exercise equipment segment. Now, popular stationary bike and treadmill manufacturer Peloton has been a noteworthy success, combining home machines with cloud-connected and trainer-led live workouts. In a significant shift for the company, which traditionally used Asian manufacturers, the firm has announced its first American factory, a $400 million operation in Troy Township in Northern Ohio. The new factory will be built on a 200-acre site and is expected to employ over 2,000. Over 1 million square feet of production and office space will be constructed. Now, operations are expected to begin in 2023. The U.S. manufacturing base will address one of the fundamental problems experienced by Peloton and other companies reliant on COVID-affected supply chains, delays. For Peloton in particular, the same virus that has turbocharged demand for their product has made it more difficult to deliver to U.S. markets, and domestic production will actually alleviate that problem. The new factory announcement follows the December acquisition of fitness equipment manufacturer Precor in a $420 million deal that included Precor's 625,000 square feet of manufacturing capacity in North Carolina and Washington State. The company will continue to market products under both brands. COVID-19 has affected billions worldwide, but for American manufacturing, there may be a silver lining in a new emphasis on reshoring and on supply chain costs as a fundamental part of total costs of goods sold. 
the days of assembly line wages forming the determining factor in manufacturing site location may truly be over. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.